Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. Now I had promised to give you an update on the Omar Kalimur trial and I am here to tell you that yesterday, Wednesday, May 15th, he was found guilty. But guys, there were some twists and turns and drama in the court on the last day of the trial which was a few days ago. And you don't need to listen to this, you know, because I make sure to take some recordings. Some interesting things came out during the cross-examination. There was a brilliant lady called Andrea Martin Swaby who took him on. And guys, this is brilliant. For those who came in late, 32-year-old Simone Campbell Collimore was ambushed in a taxi along with the taxi driver on the 2nd of January 2018 and both of them were killed. She was shot 19 times by some men who trailed them on motorcycles and as they approached the residence, the residence of course is straight ahead of the car. And I'm going to show you some photos now. I could have shown you the actual videos, but they are a bit too graphic. But from the photos, you will get the sense of exactly what, um, what happened, actually happened. Now, here is a taxi pulling up outside the apartment block. And the apartment block is straight ahead facing the car. The car is facing the apartment block. And behind it, you can see a motorcycle. It also has an apillion who is driving right behind the car. As the car slowed down in front of the apartment block, the motorcycle sped up and come up right behind it. And as you can see, there's another motorcycle trailing behind the first one as it approached. Then a man jumped off the back. Up, up the, the, the pillion rider jumped off the motorcycle. The motorcycle is now hidden behind the car. And he just come up to the door. And he started firing, firing, firing inside the vehicle. He's firing on the, on the driver's side. While the man uh, from the arrow, you can see the, the pillion from the second motorcycle now no running up because it's coming around to the woman's side, which over the passenger side on the left, to come and deal with she. The first man who started shooting when he realized that he wanted to do a thorough job, he made sure to open the car door and pointed the gun inside and started firing because he wanted to make sure that now that he got the driver, he had to make sure dirting the driver is not going to get him paid. So he opened the door so he can reach in properly because as you can see the car door wasn't fully wind down and he wanted to make sure that the person who the money is on had to be dead. And then the second pillion, now he go up to the other side of the vehicle and make sure complete the job. The lady got 19 bullets because her husband put a contract out on her to get the millions that he had insured her life for. Some interesting things came out during the cross-examination. There was a brilliant lady called Andrea Martin Swaby who took him on. And guys, this is brilliant. One of the most interesting exchanges was one she had with him pertaining to Michael Adams, who was the one who set up the whole transaction, who supervised it, organized it, and managed it from start to finish. She said to him, You said that in 2017, Michael Adams was introduced to you by a woman. Callimore answered, Yes, we met in 2017, but I can't remember when in 2017. We spoke about him coming Becoming like an employee, he wanted to sell phone stuff. 
Simone communicated with Adams. They met once or twice. I know she met him downtown. She dropped off a few phones for him for me. Of course, Simone is, is his wife that he killed. Well, he continued continue to explain himself by saying, I would describe him as someone who purchased goods from us under consignment. So Martin, Cal um, Martin Swaby then hit Callimore with a follow-up question. She said, why would you be communicating with Adams after midnight as was shown by Carl Data Records presented by a police expert previously in the trial? Callimore responded, I didn't see the records and I'm just not sure that those records would be correct. Martin Swaby, the prosecutor, she, she just smiled. And then she went on. She said, between December 25th, 2017 and January 2nd, 2018, there were 138 lines of communication or attempted communication between you and your wife. But there were 389 lines of communication or attempted communication between yourself and Adams. Why is that? In other words, you communicated with that person 250% more than your own wife. Moore said, I disagree with that. We couldn't possibly have communicated so many times. <laughs> really no Callimore and that's the best you can come with anyway so Martin Swaby went on why was Adams calling you just 8 minutes after your wife had been killed and why did you call him back 3 minutes after missing his call Callimore responded I don't know the time my wife was shot I had a missed call and I just returned the call so Martin Swaby asked him, so what about the insurance money? What, what about those insurance policies? He said, I don't know anything much about them. Simone just told me to meet with the insurance agent. I didn't see the actual policy. I don't know what was in it. Not at all. There was no truth to insurance rumors. I had nothing to do with the policy. I don't even know where the papers were. That's what he said in response to her queries. But my question is, how him find the papers within days and run Ghana the insurance company figure collect the money? Come people, make that make sense to me. He went on, it was she who asked me to take out the insurance and, and I love my wife, I'm her protector. So... I just went and I signed the documents that she asked me to sign. I didn't contact anyone to do anything to her, period. I didn't know the insurance agent prior to me signing. Boy, the man has sound like he want a heal or over him head now. He is as innocent as one of them like a picnic at Jesus' feet. Another thing that Martin Swaby asked him was, you said, told the police that there was a contractor who was threatening your wife and who had placed your life, her life in jeopardy and you were concerned. He said, yes, ma'am. So she asked him, so why when you first gave your first statement and your second statement, you were asked by the police if there was anybody who you think or suspected would have wanted to hurt your wife, you told them no. How comes it took you all of five years for you to remember that there was somebody who had actually threatened your wife's life? All him could say was, boy, I just didn't remember. I just didn't remember. I was just confused. My mind just was not where it is supposed to be. Then she held up a statement that he had given to the police and said, you said in this statement plain, see it's highlighted, it's red, and you're signed to it. It's, I do not know of any reason why anyone would want to kill my wife. No, wouldn't that be the very first thing you would remember when you hear about your wife's death? He gave no answer. 
She then continued to press him about the insurance policies. How much was the insurance policies worth? His response, I don't know. I never looked at the documents. I only signed them and she put them away. And I didn't know where she kept them. But I knew they were in the house. So she asked him, how did you get hold of those policies so fast and realize what they were? He said, because she had died, he was, she was, he was going through some things just to sort her personal belongings out. And he came up on the policies and he was just going to the insurance company for them to explain to him what the policies were worth or what they were about or if they were still effective. How convenient, guys. Wow. Oh, at this stage, I need to make a, a, a small correction. I'm not uh, above admitting my mistake. What happened? I had said the policy was with Sajikor Insurance Company, but it was not with Sajikor. The policy was actually with Allied Insurance Brokers and Belmont Road in Kingston. And for those of you who are new to the channel or are, are just realizing or just knowing of this case, he had been shot on the day when he went to the insurance company to um, take in those insurance documents. Now, here is some footage from the incident. Take a look. Well, people have it for say you now that it is wife's dad who knew same killer who was out to get him. And that may or may not be true. But, I mean, if I did for me pick me, more that I did meet him in there because me no say at the insurance and me no say me that go try to claim it. And me was going, going to go wait for him too. If I would, daddy, good for you. Me dep on a jury and them head all you. You are get way. You are get way from me dep on the jury. And so will virtually 100% of my viewers and subscribers. No worry yourself. You're good. Good man. Martin Swaby also pressed him on another issue. Why were you leaving the country on the same day as your wife's funeral? His response was, I didn't know my wife was being buried on that day. So she said, so why were you not able to find out? His response was, because she, her family, and him is at odds, and therefore he couldn't ask them any questions. So she countered by asking him, so what about your mutual friends? Didn't you and her have any mutual friends and those friends would have been aware of the funeral arrangements and you could have called one of them and asked them? His response is, because him phone did last and him have a different number, him did have no contact for none of the mutual friends. But she continued to press him further. So, why were you leaving the country anyway? Shouldn't you be staying here to assist the police with the investigations and to offer whatever help you can offer? His response was, people from the U.S. Embassy told him that the same people who were going after his wife, who had gone after his, his wife, would be coming after him and therefore he, they think it's best for his own safety that he leave the country until they felt it was safe for him to come back. Come on, guys. Doesn't that remind you of Shane McCullough? The same thing he'd say after him kill for him wife. Then she asked him about him side chick. I have her name, but I will not disclose it at this time because I'm building up a, a, a total profile and may make a full video on her. My question is, how can a man who's so devious and try to play so smart can be so damn fool? Him side chick come in a court and testify against him, you know. A side chick, of course, who was just using him. She come into court and told the court that, yes, him was paying her bills, him rent an apartment and put her, he bought her a car, him took her on trips overseas and stay in the house overseas that he and his wife owned and he invested three, invested seven, a lot of money into a business that they were starting together. 
Callum Moore had previously told the court that he had invested $3 million in the business. Ask the lady how much money him spent on her or in the business. She said she don't know. She wasn't keeping track of any expenses. So, in other words, he was such a stupid P-R-I-C-K that him have a loving wife and a good business going, suck out the money out of the business, use it and mind the side chick, and when the money done and in business got bankrupt, him can't get back nothing from the side chick because she suck out everything and gone. Him now getting him feelings because the side chick left him. Him wife don't have any money. So what him do, him decide to kill the side chick because him make half of the side chick and send man to go kill she too, you know. About a week before him go after the wife. Because he wanted some money back from her and she decided she not giving him one red cent. So in all, he might spend about five or six million dollars or more. Three million dollars on the business plus paying rent for her for two and a half years or three and a half years I think they were together. Plus expensive trips all over the world. So he spent a good maybe who knows eight million dollars for her. Now, when him depend him face now and call back to her, she tell him say she don't have one red cent for give. So, probably that was what prompted him at this stage to go just dirt the wife and get the money. Because, remember, you know, it was just after him realized saying broke, after him realized him throw all the money at Yeri Bank and I try beg her back something to start out back for him life, that was when she tell him, say, she not have a thing for game. She not have nothing for game. So she, this side chick saw the man with his family, helped stuck him dry like the parasite that she is, walked away and tip him over the edge. Don't get me wrong, you know. He, he, he would have dirt her at some point because that was the whole point of taking out the insurance. But I'm just saying that what caused him to actually or rather what was the catalyst for him dirting her at that time was out of desperation he needed the money at then because his life was totally falling apart because the side trick nyam out everything so on Wednesday the jury went out for just hour and a half hour and a half and coming back come pronounce him guilty I think the um, in about a month or so time, but in definitely a few weeks, he will be sentenced, and I will tell you how the sentence goes. Guys, thanks for visiting my channel. I really appreciate your visit. Please do like, share, leave a comment below, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.